Grace, mercy, peace are yours in Jesus Christ, given to you in his precious word. How many of you are people who read the instructions before doing something? How many of you think you can skip over reading the instructions? Before you might do your homework, if you're a student. Or before starting up the chainsaw for the season, before baking the pecan pie or cooking up your favorite Jaeger schnitzel, do you read through the instructions or do you just try to wing it whatever way you think it's supposed to be? Reading through the instructions can save a whole lot of headaches if we do that before we try to do our homework. And reading through the instructions for the chainsaw at the beginning of every season can be a good idea because that can save us from a different kind of headache if we don't hold that chainsaw quite right. Reading through the instructions and the directions can be really good for us. But some people prefer not to read through the instructions or the directions. Why not? Well, some people think that they already know better. Some people don't care. Well, some people like to do things their own way. And for some things that can be all right, I suppose especially if it's something, well, I don't want to say pecan pie because there's really only one way to do that. But for some things we might think that there's different ways to handle things. How many of you read through the fine print? I see less, fewer hands. If I read through the fine print on one of my favorite cereals, I don't like what I read. Because it tells me that the number two ingredient is sugar. And I'm trying to cut back on sugar, and that means one of my favorite cereals has to stay, well, it better stay in the store, otherwise it's going the wrong place. And so sometimes we don't like fine print. And then I have the fine print here, the terms of service for Facebook and Google. What's in here? I, I really not sure what's in here. Before you clicked, I agree, did you read through the terms of service? Or did you just click, I agree, without reading through the fine print? Today, God has an offer for us, a promise for us. And that promise comes with some fine print. It comes with some directions. Now, before I tell you what that fine print is, what the directions are, let me tell you what the promise is, because sometimes when you think of fine print and directions, what do we think? Oh, I don't need those. I don't need to bother with those. So before you come to that conclusion about the fine print and the directions for this promise, let me tell you what the promise is. The Lord says, do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That sounds like a pretty good promise, doesn't it? Even better than Jaeger schnitzel and pecan pie. Because with God's promise, we don't need to be afraid of anything. New school year. Last night, all those different faces, people I didn't recognize, people whose names I had, forgotten, all those different people trying to mingle with new people don't need to be afraid. That, that storm that's brewing back home, that storm that's brewing at work, don't need to be afraid. Why? Because we have that promise from the Lord. Because the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. With that, what do we get to know? I'm not, we're not here alone. We're not going out into the world. We're not going out into life alone. And we're not even having to face that blank on our own and alone. But we get to put those two together. Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. We get to put it together. Oh, even do not be overwhelmed. Do not be discouraged. We get to put that together with the promise. For the Lord your God is with you, and he will go with you wherever you go. That sounds like a pretty good promise, doesn't it? 
A pretty good promise, that the kind of promise that we really want to make sure that we have. So what about the directions? I won't tell you that they're easy. Most all of us will struggle with them. And the fine print? I wouldn't at all be surprised if some, maybe even some of us, decide that, well, the fine print isn't worth it to us. Because the fine print calls for a cost. And we might decide that the cost isn't worth it for us. And so what is the fine print? What is the cost? What are the directions to be able to hold on to that great promise? The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God put it this way to Joshua. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Did you catch the cost? Listen to the Lord and follow him. Some people aren't willing to follow those directions and instructions. Some people aren't willing to pay that price, pay that cost. It's my life. I get to do what I want. And then what sometimes happens? As people are doing what they want, as I'm doing what I want, sooner or later there's some trouble that comes along, and then what is it very easy to do to say, where are you, God? Why didn't you do something about that, God? Now, if we decide to go off our own way and then blame God for the trouble we get ourselves into, what should we expect from God? Perhaps double coming back at us, right? But if instead, after going our own way and getting ourselves into trouble, who turn to God with a broken heart, what do we get to expect? We get to thank God and praise God that we have a God who welcomes the broken heart, who invites the welcome heart back home. At any rate, got a little bit off track from the fine print. What is the fine print? Well, God doesn't give us this promise. I will be with you wherever you go. God doesn't give us this promise so that we can go play out in the street or go play with the devil. Holy, 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 God is with me wherever I go. And God doesn't give us this promise so that we can go through life aimlessly, so that we can go through life godlessly. Holy, 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 God is with me wherever I go. Now, if that's the way that I go through life aimlessly, godlessly, if that's the way that I go through life playing with the devil and playing with his, the devil's trouble. Instead of living with the Lord's promise, I'm tempting the Lord, tempting the Lord to bring something down, something else down on me. Now, some people, as they go through life aimlessly and godlessly, sometimes we, when we're going through life aimlessly and godlessly and playing with the devil, we think, hmm, this seems to be going all right for me. But we get to remember, the cost is coming. There is a cost, and we can't get away from that cost on our own. The cost is coming when we have to face God and face the cost of facing eternity without God. But it doesn't have to be that way, does it? It doesn't have to be that way. I'll admit, I'll even put it plainly, that the directions that God gives, they might sound simple, but they're not easy. And the cost, it might sound reasonable, but no matter how hard we try, time and again, we will fall short. We all have our good intentions, right? You're here this morning. We all have our good intentions now, this new year, thinking of the school year, the new season of the fall, 
this new season, this new year, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better at getting into church. I'm going to be better at listening, paying attention, taking it home with me. Or it might be, this new year, I'm going to be better at following and sticking that church and coming to Family Bible Hour and the children in Sunday school. This year, I'm going to be better and we're going to, at home, we're going to start our days and we're going to end our days with God. And we have these good intentions, right? And what happens? You know, life happens, huh? Life happens. We like to blame life. But we don't get to blame life. It's not life's problem. It's not life's fault that I get distracted. It's my fault I get distracted. That I let myself. That I distract myself. And we fall short of our good intentions. If that sounds like you, I know that it sounds like me. I have good news. Or better, God has good news. This book isn't a rule book. It's not just a book of directions or a price book. Here's what it is going to cost you. The heart and core of this book is a story of God's love, his free grace, his undeserved grace. I'll admit it's a free love, a undeserved grace that we don't always feel, might not always see it around us. Sometimes we're looking in the wrong place. We think I should be able to feel it. We think we should be able to experience all the time that God's love and grace are around us. But to see God's love, to see God's grace, the best place to look isn't in ourselves or around us, but the best place to look is in here to the gift of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't come from God. He wasn't sent by God as rule giver for God. He didn't come with a great big if. If you follow my directions, if you get them right, if you follow me, then I will be with you. No, Jesus didn't come as the great big rule giver with that giant if. Instead, God sent Jesus as the Savior that we need. He sent Jesus as our Savior, even when we weren't following his directions, because we weren't following his directions, because we couldn't pay the price, because we wouldn't pay the price. God sent Jesus and put Jesus in our place to get it right for us. From before the time he was born to his gasping last breath, he lived the life. He lived the life following God exactly, listening to God perfectly. And he did that in place of us, for us. So that with Jesus, God sees you as living the life, listening perfectly. And then with his death on the cross, what did Jesus do? Jesus took the guilt of our sin. He took the guilt of our sin and he paid the price. Not just part of the price, but all the price. And not just for some people, but for all people. For you, for me, for this whole wide world. He did it all. He lived the life so that you can have this promise true for you. Do not be discouraged. Do not be terrified. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What does that get to mean for us? Well, today, with Jesus, God promises you, I forgive you. I love you. I'm here for you. No matter what you have done in the past, no matter where you have been in the past, with Jesus, God promises you, I love you. I forgive you. I'm here for you. No matter what the world throws at you, no matter how the world looks at you, with Jesus, God promises you, I love you. I forgive you. I'm here for you. No matter what trouble seems to be chasing you down and chasing you into a different trouble ahead of you, no matter what trouble that might be, with Jesus, 
God says to you, I love you, I forgive you, I'm here for you. That's, but Jesus, that's God's promise for each and every one of you. Now with a promise like that, it sounds pretty good, right? With a promise like that, taking time to listen to Jesus, taking time to learn more of his love, taking time to soak in his power and his promise, that doesn't sound like an outrageous cost, does it? Instead, taking time to listen to Jesus sounds more like love. Right? In the same way, taking some time out during the week and gathering together as God's family for worship. Continuing that time with some family Bible hours, Sunday school for the ch children. Taking some time at home in the morning, maybe, maybe in the evening, maybe both. Midday's not a bad time either. Taking some time to listen to the love of Jesus? That doesn't sound like an outrageous cost, does it? Instead, it sounds more like a great investment. A great investment because as we take that time and spend, our, spend some time in here with our heart and mind in here, this is the way that God invests his love and his life in you. This is the way that God works his promise and extends his promise and his power to you. Sometimes we like to think that, oh, I was baptized a long time ago, or I pop into church now and then, or maybe even every week, and so that should be enough. God must work like that in some way, shazamming his power and his promise into us and keeping us strong. What is God's way? Day by day, over and over, again and again, deeper and deeper. We fill our hearts and minds, and he fills our hearts and minds with his love and his life, his power and his promise. That's the fine print that comes with this promise. That's the fine print that God has. Does that fine print sound like a deal killer to you? I hope not. Because this is the way that God gives us his life and his love. May God bless you. May God bless your time here. May God bless your time at home as you open up. May God bless your time in study. So that you are filled to overflowing with his life and his love today and forever. God bless you. Amen.